everybody. This is Hammer Striker here. Today we're going to talk to you about the CAR PM9, a high quality entry into the concealed carry market by CAR. This is a very small, very light, 9mm single stack pistol, and it's truly aimed at the concealed carry market, even though it is actually quite fun and pleasurable to shoot at the range. For its very, very small size, it manages recoil very, very well. So, let me show you a few things about this gun. First, we'll start by showing you that it is unloaded. The gun is very small, as you can see. It fits on pretty much on the palm of my hand. It really doesn't hang off very much. It's a single stack. And it's extremely thin and light. This gun is it has got a stainless steel slide. And on the P series, it has a few enhancements over the C series. The P is their premium series. It has a laser engraved slide as opposed to roll mark. The takedown pin, which is also the barrel lug pin, is milled out of solid bar stock as opposed to being uh, molded. Overall, it's a, an extremely lightweight, high quality pistol. It also has polygonal rifling, which gives it uh, what you might call a match grade barrel, which gives it exceptional accuracy for something this small, and it shoots well with very different uh, bullet weights. Overall, the pistol itself is 5.42 inches, sorry about that, from front to back, 4 inches tall with an empty magazine, and 0.9 inches thick. So from the standpoint of inside the waistband or pocket carry, it's an excellent per uh, gun for that purpose. Now this does have the night sights, which are available from car, and you can see they're very easy to see. Let me get it up on the black background. They're very clear, easy to see three dot sights. The sights are drift adjustable, windage adjustable, and they're dovetailed, so you can actually replace either the front or rear sights. So if you got one without the night sights, you can easily replace it with night sights. The magazines are stainless steel, and the stock uh, flush magazine is six, six rounds, and of course one in the pipe, so you get six plus one capacity. There is a seven round extended magazine available from CAR, which is also a stainless steel magazine with a plastic base, and when that's in the gun, kind of hangs down a little bit, gives you almost a three finger grip. It doesn't have a curved pinky extender like a lot of them, but the magazine is designed that when you close your hand on it, it acts as a, a pinky rest or a pinky extender. With the flush magazine, you're getting a, you know, a two-finger grip, but you've got the, the advantage of having a very short grip, which makes it much easier to hide in, you know, inside the waistband or put it in a pocket and have it sit upright and not you know, print as much. The trigger on this is they, they build it as a DAO trigger. However, it does have uh, slide cycling assisted cocking, so it's got a partially cocked striker. So the trigger is very little take up. It's a reasonably smooth trigger. It's not super light. It probably comes in around the six pound range, but it, it's by no stretch a heavy trigger for what's classified as a DAO. Pull it all the way back, cycle. You'll note that the reset is all the way out. It's not a short reset trigger like a Glock or some of the others. But it's not a true DAO in that when you do fire it, you don't have second strike capability like any of the other striker guns that have you know, uh, slide assisted cocking. You do have to cycle it to recock the striker. This trigger, though a little bit long and uh, slightly heavier, is very easy to operate, very easy to you know, actuate the trigger and stay on your target. I found that to be a very pleasant trigger to shoot. And it's also exceptionally smooth. There's no stacking, no grit. As it pulls back, it's just a very small, smooth, clean pull with a nice crisp break. And of course, you know, with that thin size and small footprint, you can easily use something like this DeSantis Nemesis pocket holster. Put that package in your pocket. Unloaded with a flush mount magazine, it's 15.9 ounces with the, you know, an empty flush mount magazine. Even fully loaded with you know, seven rounds, one in the pipe of nine millimeter, it's not very heavy and actually does work quite well in the pocket. Other options for people that choose not to pocket carry or if it's not feasible for some reason, 
It'll be something like this DeSantis soft tuck, which is an inside the waistband holster. And overall, as an inside waistband with the thin size of the gun and you know low profile holsters like that, it fits quite well. Other options might include something like this sneaky P. You know, if you're doing your dress pants, dockers, things like that, where even a small gun like this in the pocket's going to print, you can easily stick it in something like this. It looks like a PDA case. Nobody would know you have it, and it's not so heavy that it's going to flop around on your belt. So it's a very, very well designed, perfect little concealed carry, especially giving you the power of nine millimeter in such a small package. Other comparable guns in this area might be something like this Glock 43, which is Glock's recent you know, super small 9mm, and when you put them next to each other by comparison you can see that even Glock's super small gun is huge compared to the PM9. There's at least a good half inch in barrel length. Now interestingly enough the grip heights are about the same, but from a thickness standpoint the Glock is not a thick gun but neither is the car. With the Glock you get 6 plus 1 just like the car. So overall you can see it's a very, very small little gun. Maintenance on this gun is actually relatively simple. There are a few little tricks to successfully taking it apart. So first you remove the magazine, confirm that it's empty of course. And what you have to do is on the front of the slide there's a mark on the slide and there's a mark on the frame. And you pull the slide back to line those two marks up and then you're going to push this barrel pivot and slash takedown pin out. It'll be a little half moon shape, I'll show you in a second. So you pull this back, line these up, and then if you look up above here, you'll see, and it's kind of hard to see of course on camera, but there's a little half moon shape in there. And there's a pin, part of this takedown pins under there. Once that's lined up from the other side, and usually what I do, I know it's unloaded at this point because I've already verified it, is I will grab it in one hand to line that pin up and line those marks up and then from the other side you just push the pin out. You can use your finger or you can use a uh, like a plastic handle of a brush or anything that's not going to scratch it up to push that pin out. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Okay. So now that I've got the pin pushed forward, then I can just grab a hold of it and I can pull it out. Now I have found this particular gun to be a little bit temperamental at times when it comes to taking it apart. You've got to kind of do everything just right or it will give you a bit of a hassle. And one of those things is to don't let it all the way back down as soon as you pull the pin. Put it to the point where it's almost in battery and then pull the trigger as you slide the slide off. Otherwise it tends to want to hang up a little bit. And I've tried pulling the trigger before starting disassembly and that doesn't seem to fix it. It's got to be right about that time frame. Once you've got it apart, you'll see that there are a few differences between this and many of the other polymer pistols. And one of the areas that you'll see is significantly different is the frame. Instead of the typical Glock-like setup with a locking block in the middle, this one works a little bit differently. The, there are two steel guide rails. They're, they're very thin rails at the front and they ride in a groove right in the front of the slide here. And that's what guides the front of the slide. It does have polymer guides here, but that's nothing to really be a concern because most of the guide and force is being taken up by the steel rails at the front. So these are more just positional guides for helping assemble the slide and keep it on track they're not really absorbing the force of the recoil cycle. And then at the back, it's got steel inserts for the rear guides and a large ejector. The trigger mechanism is here at the back. And one of the things you'll see that they've done, and I'll show you when I show you the barrel, the trigger bar is recessed back in here and is part of what enables them to make this so thin that the trigger mechanism is down low and recessed back so you don't have that extra space taken up by the trigger bar. The pin on the P series is actually milled out of bar stock so it's all one milled piece. On the C series this is a molded piece but this acts as a slide release, barrel guide, 
all in one thing as well as a takedown pin. So it performs all three of those functions. Now when it comes to the slide, what you'll see is the slide is very similar to many other striker based slides that you've seen with a few inner, you know, minor differences. So we'll start with the recoil spring which we'll remove and you might consider this partially captive. It's a dual spring and here's the inner and the outer. The outer spring can be removed but it fits fairly tight. It's a compression fit so it's not going to fly off when you take it apart. The barrel is 3.1 inches polygonal rifling, very high quality, very highly polished feed ramp. And this is one of the differences I mentioned. You'll notice the feed ramp is relatively narrow and it's offset. The trigger bar fits into this gap over here, which is another one of the things they've done to make the gun much thinner. Despite the fact that it has a narrow feed ramp, we've had no feed issues with this. It's eaten absolutely everything we've tried to put through it. So, you know, it does work very well and helps get that very thin profile. The slide itself is drop safe. There's the striker block drop safety. It's at the back of the slide assembly, unlike the Glock and some others, but equally effective. And then you have your striker assembly. This is a stainless steel slide. Very high quality, very well finished, no sharp edges. And when you look at the sides of it, you look at the serrations, they're very well done. They're grippy. It's easy to get a good grip on them, but they don't bite into your finger. And then the front end is tapered to facilitate holstering. So there's a lot of attention to detail on this gun overall and visible in various areas like that when you look at the slide. So let's go ahead and put it back together. Drop the barrel back in. Now the recoil spring can be a little challenging to put back in because you're going to have to make sure that the spring catches in this socket at the front but doesn't protrude through the hole. And then push it forward and drive the front end of this out through the hole. And it can be a little bit tricky and it's kind of hard to do it without, high, you know, without putting my hand in your way because you have to support it. But basically I put it down in there, pushed it forward until I felt it touch the front and then just wiggled it a little bit until it popped through and then seated it. And you do want to make sure that it's centered. So make sure it centers on, on here. Unlike the Glocks and some of the others, it really doesn't have a deep half moon that it will automatically just drop into. At that point, you would take the slide, place it back on the rails, and pull it back. Now what I have found with this particular one, and of course we've just taken this apart so we do know that it's unloaded, is this sits back, the, the end of the guide rod sits back a little bit, and every once in a while you go to pull it back, it may hang up on the top of the guide hole and make it difficult to pull back. So if it does that, just pull back on it a little bit, and of course it didn't this time, but you'd pull back on it a little bit and then possibly push it on the front, you know, push down a little bit with a plastic you know, cleaning rod or something like that, and it'll pop through. Once you get that to happen, the next thing you need to do is line up right here. You need to line up the barrel. It's going to be very difficult to get this to show on the other. If I can get my hand behind it, you can see my hand all the way through that the barrel's lined up. At that point, take the takedown pin and just push it in there to retain the barrel. If you try to go all the way back into the position to put the, the takedown pin in, the barrel will slide out of position and you'll have a very difficult time doing it. At this point, pull it back until the pin's aligned. Flip this up and push it in place. At that point, you are reassembled. A few other things to you know, consider about this gun. One is that the pull on the slide is rather heavy. One of the compromises to get good recoil tolerance and small compact size is it does have a somewhat heavy recoil spring. So if you got somebody who's a little bit weaker hands, a little bit weaker wrists, they may have a difficult time cycling this. You know, the, uh, somebody that has a little bit weaker hands, a small gun isn't always better. But if you have no problem cycling the slide and you're looking for something in this type of a size, this is a perfect gun for you. The only other thing I'll mention is that it did have a break-in period. We put a couple hundred rounds through it, and during the initial couple hundred rounds, it did have you know, the occasional feed issue and that type of thing. 
That's actually to be expected in a small, super small gun like this. Once we got through the first couple hundred rounds, went through that break-in period, it has performed flawlessly with everything we fed it. So overall, you'll see our range footage, and uh, it's a very pleasant gun to shoot. If you like our videos, please share, subscribe, give us a thumbs up, and have a great day.